The peroneus longus and brevis make up what's called the perineal muscle group when referring to perineal tendonitis. The peroneus longus originates at the lateral proximal fibula and inserts at a medial cuneiform and base of the first metatarsal. The peroneus brevis originates at the distal lateral fibula and inserts at the fifth metatarsal. Both tendons dive down, run underneath the superior and inferior perineal retinaculum and make a tight loop behind the lateral malleolus. The perineal muscles are responsible for eversion and plantar flexion. Running, especially downhill running, repetitive ankle sprains, postural deficits, repetitive friction between the tendon and the bone, stress, overpronation, tight calf muscles, and high arches can create stress, tightness, and irritation on the lateral foot and ankle and the perineal tendons. With that stress comes fraying, inflammation, adhesions, tightness, and pain in the connective tissue surrounding the perineal tendons. So one of the biggest goals of treatment in this area is to vacuum adhesions and create space for those tendons to breathe and be happy. The space behind the ankle where the perineal tendon runs is a very, very narrow space. So for this reason, we are going to use the tiniest edge cup that we have because it fits the best in this tiny nook and cranny. Then we are going to perform a technique called ovaling. With ovaling, after you put the cup on using the pinch grip method, you are going to continue squeezing the sides of the cup so that the cup forms an oval shape and then dynamically drive that cup along the pathway of the tendon to open up the retinaculum tunnels and soft tissue in this area and create space for the tendon to breathe and become less irritated. So the cup is attached. I'm going to take it, give it that little pinch on the side so that we make that oval shape. And I'm going to just follow the pathway of the tendon right behind that ankle and I'm gonna come right back up. So it's almost like a slow friction. I'm gonna put the cup on, pinch grip method, go right back to that pinch grip method, give it a little squeeze on both sides. And now I'm going to dynamically move that cup right behind the ankle. And then I'm gonna come right back out. I'm very right-handed, so I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna use my right hand again just to show you in a smoother fashion. Take the cup, pinch the cup. I don't have to remove my hand, but I'm removing my hand so that I can show you. But now we're gonna go right back into it, pinch the sides, and we're gonna do just a little bit of frictioning right behind the ankle. I, I typically don't attempt to take it past the ankle because the suction usually breaks when we go right over the ankle. So staying right behind the ankle and just working it in that small area usually works well. And this is typically the area that becomes really, really tight and adhered. So this is a good space to work. I can also take that cup and using a donut press method this time because it's a little bit hard to get the pinch grip to stay on the foot, but we're gonna use the donut press method and we can kind of line some cups up at the bottom of the foot where that pathway of the tendon continues after it passes the ankle. So we can rest a cup here. I can take another cup and I can dynamically just do that ovaling that I was telling you about while we still have that one cup statically resting over there. That way we're attacking that, that tendon and that inflammation from both sides. So give those a try. Remember, try both sides. Let me know what you think.